Um, I've been doing a series showing you how to get started with Umbrico and um, I've been doing all the different pages like the home page, the about page, um, showing you how to use archetype to render things like the um, the features section I think it was but um, I'm just getting to a point now where I think it's a bit repetitive um, probably getting a bit boring for people now just keep watching the same thing because I'll the next thing for me to do was go through the services but again it's just going to be using archetype setting up the model, setting up the view, the controller you don't want to watch the same video over and over again so I'm probably going to leave it here on this series I might do a series later, uh, I might do a video later on for the deployment on how I go about doing a deployment of the site when I'm done but I think I'll probably just finish this in my own time without filming myself finishing it just so that, as I say, I don't want to do repetition. There's me repeating, saying I don't want to do repetition. Um, yeah, but with this video, I'm just going to just fix a couple of things that I've noticed or that I would do differently now, even since starting this, because that's what happens with programming. You always look back and you think, oh, I wouldn't do it that way. Um, some conventions and things that I do, um, ReSharper doesn't always agree with. Um, people that have followed the videos have told me oh why are you doing it that way and one of the ways um, that I do agree with is this where I'm using a constant here partial view folder instead of doing that I could actually just do um, private string and then say partial view path and then I could pass in the name of the partial view and then I can return um, this with .cshtml and if I put in the uh, what's what do you call it? The dollar sign. That's using C sharp seven. Now instead of doing a string dot format, and then you do the zero or the one depending on the index of the item that you're going to replace, you can actually use a variable if you do it this way. Um, Luke Warren made me aware of that feature in C sharp seven. So thanks for that, Luke. Um, so that's one thing that I would do instead of doing this partial view folder. Now I'm going to remove that that's going to cause errors and then I can just where it's where it's causing those errors I can just replace it with partial view path and then wrap it with the with the uh, parentheses partial view path same again and get rid of uh, cshtml because I don't need that now because that's already going to be put on at the end. So it makes it a bit shorter, it's a bit better um, and hopefully people like James from Cynical Developer who's rebuilding his site in Umbrico will be happy to see this. He suggested this as a possible solution because it really bugged him. <laughs> Plus it made, when he was doing this it made ReSharper moan at him. I don't use ReSharper myself anymore because it annoys me probably because things like this but it slows my machine down as well. Anyway, so I'm just going to go through, make sure that I've done these correctly, and then test that it works. Partial view path, partial view path, partial view path. Right, so that's on that controller. So if I just save, build the solution, and then see if it runs. So first of all, see if it builds, and then I'll see if it runs. Okay, home page, let's have a look. So I'm expecting it to run okay. It wasn't a major change in the code. Just uh, turned it into a little private method. Oh, here we go. Interesting. Yellow screen of death. Uh, right. Don't know why there's an L left on there. Featured. Delete that L. Rebuild. 
and then refresh. So hopefully that's the only one. Quite like it when there's errors, even when I'm doing live coding. I know it sounds a bit weird, but it's just something interesting to see rather than everything going plain sailing and smooth. That's not the reality of being a programmer. It's, it, you know, you're seeing the yellow screen left quite often. There we go. So it, it seems to have rendered these out quite happily. Um, so I can also do that change on the other pages. So where are we? So that's the home controller. So let's look for the other controllers that I've got. I've got a blog controller. So same idea. I'm just going to use that. I don't think it's worth creating a central method to do this because it is slightly different. It's got a different path in it. I'll just use this. And then I'm just going to put that in there. So it's the same again. So just the one on this controller. Just have a quick check, see if that liked it or not. Hope you're not too sad that this is probably going to be one of the last ones, but you probably agree it's getting a bit repetitive now. You don't want to do repetition all the time. But if you do have any requests, so say you get to this video and there was something that you were interested in doing, uh, please let me know um, so I can possibly do an example. I'll do a separate video, a separate post to show you how to do that sort of thing. Um, one request that I had was someone wanted to know how they can do a blog RSS feed. So I did a video and a post about that and gave the source code for that as well. Um, yeah, so I do get requests now and again. It gives me ideas for blog posts and videos. So that's fine. I'm quite happy to help you out with those. Right, the blog worked. And then the other controller was the site layout. So if I just replace this on there. And then replace the folder name with site layout. You get the picture anyway. It's a bit, a bit boring for you, but... We'll get through it as quick as I can on this video. Hope you've enjoyed the series so far anyway. Um, hope you were able to get going with Umbraco. Um, and as I say, when I come to deploying it, I'll just show you my process for doing that. So if you're at the point where you're ready to deploy yours but you don't know how to, um, then I'll show you the method that I use and I'll just try and keep it simple. I won't try and do anything complicated. I just want it to be at a level where we can all understand without trying to show off. So there's quite a few things on this that I would take to the next level, but for the purposes of this demo, it's easier just to keep it simple for you. Because it's hard to it's hard to grasp new things, let alone the um, the different method um, I don't know what the word I'm thinking but I don't want to enforce other things on you to learn I want you to learn about this rather than oh and we should be doing a dependency injection as well at the same time because that can come later right so I've just changed the site layout one so we may get some errors if I've not done it correctly because I am talking after all while I'm doing it. Hopefully I have done it right. Seems alright to me. Yeah, it seems okay. Um, And then there's the other thing about getting the home page. Um, so with the home page, if I go back to the home controller, this that I got from someone on our Umbraco, where they helped me get to the home page alias, I think it was on our Umbraco. This can be shortened, so whatever page within the site you are, assuming that you're within the somewhere lower down as a descendant of the home page all you need to do is you can delete from the one 
to the after the equals equals just delete that and also take off dot first or default and that will actually just get you up to the home page that will get you the home page as an iPublish content it's a lot shorter there's no going up the tree and then coming back down the tree it's just as simple as that just that will now get the home page so what's this doing so for the featured items if I just do a build we'll just have a look see make sure that, that works but yeah I just wanted to show you that because again that was one that James didn't like it was a bit over the top um, and I agree with him on that one I just want a quick way to get to the home page some people store the ID of the home page in the config file uh, you can do that and then on the different environments because the home page doesn't really get deleted and then re-added it's something that you wouldn't want people to delete and then on Brico you can stop people from deleting things like the home page so you could do with the ID so you get the ID from the config and you just do on Brico content we give it the ID and then you're, you're away so you could do it that way or you could do it this way or you could use examine to search or you query and things like that um, or just do it this way current page dot ancestor or self home and I have updated my blog post about that as well so if you go to codeshare.co.uk how to find the home page in Umbraco I've updated the example here so this is from within the controller and this is from within a view so I just thought I'd show you that one while I'm on here so let's have a look for any other instances where it's getting the home page see I'm doing that quite often on this as well home page home page home page what I can do is take that off and make it a private variable Um, or does that not work with the current page? Um, no, I won't do that for now. I've been doing that quite a lot of work, um, just trying to sort out my controllers and things like that. Just try and make it reusable, everything reusable. So I'll just go through and just quickly update these homepage ones. So that's fine. Home page. So yeah, there's another one. Current page ancestor or so I can just replace this whole line. And then this one um, because the home page oh I'll just show you. So let's just get the home page here. That's the home page, and then the blog page is a child of the home page, so I can just do children.where and then document type alias equals. So I can do home page dot children dot where document type alias equals blog first or default. That's simplified that one. If I build that. And then refresh. I wonder if we'll get any errors. Hopefully not. The moment of truth. Yeah. So it seems okay. The blog's working. If I go to the blog page, pulling them through fine. So yeah, it's finding everything it needs to find, all right. So 
that's showing you those. Um, what else can I fix? Mm. Might just leave it at that actually. I think I'm quite happy with it. I, I don't normally like to do um, what I call magic numbers or magic strings where you don't necessarily know what the string value is. Um, so if you see things with a string in, usually in the code, I like to have them defined in a constant higher up. But I think with, the, with all these uses of it, it's fairly clear what it is. I don't think I need to define them further up and then use the constant version of them. Uh, with all this, it seems pretty straightforward, so I'm just not going to worry about that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to leave it at that, actually. So as I say, um, if you've got any requests, just um, leave them in the comments either on the YouTube video or on the on the website. So I don't know if you know that on my website, codeshare.co.uk, if you click on the navigation, you go to videos, you can see all of my videos on there. I haven't put the code out for any of this series, um, just because it, it's quite a long series. This will be the 11th video. Um, and also if I gave all the code for this website then you wouldn't actually be doing anything. It's supposed to be so you can learn how to do it, not so I can do it for you. Um, so that's why I've not put the code out on this. When it's just smaller videos or smaller blog posts and I give examples of code snippets, I'm quite happy to share that code. With it being as the name of the site is Code Share. But yeah, with it being a long one and a big project, well I say big project, it's not a massive website but you know, it's a, it's going to be a complete website at the end of it. Uh, so look out for an update. Um, I'm not sure how long it will take me to do. I'm just doing it in my spare time. But at some point in the future, I'll do another video when I'm deploying the site and maybe showing you around the site. And then maybe when, when my, if and when my mother-in-law does and so, decide to start using the site and updating it with a with a portfolio and what have you, then I can show you that as well. So um, thanks again, and if you are watching it on YouTube and you enjoy the video or, or the series, please click like and subscribe to my channel, and look out for other videos. This isn't the last video I'm doing. It's just I'm just trying not to be boring on this um, series. So I'll do other videos. I'll just keep doing other things along the way. All right. So uh, thanks for watching, and take care.